Built in 1998 on farmland that once grew tobacco, the aptly named Tobacco Road is considered one of this country's golf masterpieces. Designed by Mike Strantz, this course is one of the most challenging and unique golf courses I will ever play. It's said that this course is like Pine Valley on steroids. Greens tend to be on the small side, but if they aren't, you can expect massive undulations. The fairways here are wide, but it certainly doesn't look like it from the tee box with hard dog legs. And the waste areas? Well, it can seem like there are more sand than grass at times. One poor shot and it can feel like you're trying to hit out of the Grand Canyon. And that isn't even mentioning how many blind shots there are. And in one case, a hidden green. It's a love-hate relationship out here amongst those who have played it. And if it feels like I'm rambling here, well, there's only one reason for it. The aerial footage of this course is probably the most beautiful vista I have ever taken of a course. And I want you to see all of what is the legendary Tobacco Road. I love a good par 5 to start my round. This fairway here looks a lot tighter than it actually is with the mounds covering both sides of the fairway. Unfortunately that drive is blocked to the right. As I have mentioned blind shots are plentiful at this course. Being this far right it was kind of a guess as to where I should aim. The direction was correct though and I'm back in the fairway. Pitching wedge in hand. Struck it pretty well, but I ended up a little short. Wrong club choice, should have went with the nine iron. Decided to take out the putter here. Don't know if that was the right choice. As you can see, that ball moved well away from the hole. One of the downsides to Tobacco Road is that there are no caddies here on the course. Probably one of the reasons why you're gonna play five hours here. I came up just a little short and would tap in for bogey. Second hole is a short par four. Took out the driver. That was the right shot shape for this hole. Would leave me with just a wedge in. Clipped that one very nicely. A little slightly out to the right, but I would find the green. Greens here at Tobacco Road. Very difficult to navigate around. I could never tell if a putt was fast or slow. Came up short there, but would tap in for par. We'll move to the third hole. 125 yards, that is a pitching wedge. Block that one out to the right. Kind of a push draw would find the bunker. There I am right there, splashing out. Very narrow green right there. Tough to kind of land, especially on the down slope. Would have a long par putt. Ball kind of ran away from the hole there. Would tap in for bogey. We'll move to the fourth. Beautiful, but difficult par five here. Dog legs to the left. Kind of push that out to the right just a little bit, covering that right side bunker area. There's no real chance for me to go at this at two, especially with the waist area on the left side. That was a six iron. I'm trying to hit about 175 yards. Putting it back into the middle of the fairway. Leaves me with just a sand wedge in. And if you notice the tree on the right side, that is actually pin high. I thought this was a terrible shot, but what happened was that it landed on the green. And if you can see from this aerial shot, if you do hit the left side of that tree, the ball will kick onto the green like mine did. I was very fortuitous. That was a good putting stroke there, getting it just past the hole. That would be a nice tap in for par. Fifth hole, Probably one of the most famous of all the holes here at Tobacco Road. You can drive the green if you want. I decided to take the conservative route. Hit my hybrid down the center of the fairway. Ball is above my feet here. That is a gap wedge. And I yanked that way, way left. Would hit the green and roll off. And it was a draw live. Yeah. Should have been aiming more right, but the pin was kind of tucked in at the right. And oh, incoming. Coming in hot there, slightly roll off the green, would have to chip on again for par. Thought I hit this one really well, but that ball just kept on going. Yes, sir, it certainly did. Now I have this putt for bogey. 
It was fast on the way there, it's slow on the way back. Getting a little frustrated, but with tap in for double bogey. Six hole, 122 yards. At least the par threes are kind of short. This is a pitching wedge. Kind of have a severe in to out swing going on on this day. I don't know why, but my swing changes constantly. <laughs> Seems like every single round when I'm watching my videos, there's some sort of swing change that I make. That bunker shot was pretty decent. Would leave me with a good chance to make a par. It sure did. And I call this the old one-timer. Nice assist there. <laughs> Move to the seventh hole. Seventh hole, another blind tee shot here. I thought I hit this a little too far left. Should be fine. I guess that's all right. I don't know. Yes, that would be fine. This fairway is rather wide. You can miss a lot further left than you think. That was a gap wedge. I kind of pushed that out to the right. But I did find the green, so I shouldn't really be complaining. Got about 25 feet for birdie. And we're going to lip out. Yeah, I thought I did too, but that'd be a nice little tap in for par. Eighth hole. Par three, a beautiful par three, 168 yards. That's a six iron and just came right over the top of it. I didn't know where I went. That was a good maybe 50 yards left of where I was aiming. Oh, I, hit too hard again. I hit it too hard, but to be honest with you, there's really no place to land that ball. As you can see, this green is severely undulated. That would be a nice roll, though, and I would have a nice tap in for bogey. Move to the ninth hole, and yeah. Yeah, it's getting bad, guys. It's getting bad. Back-to-back -back consecutive club drops on the tee box. Thankfully, though, there is a cutout along this tree line, as you can see here. There is a little bit of fairway that is hidden. I didn't quite reach the fairway, so I'm just kind of punching out, leaving myself with a good wedge in. That is exactly what I did. This is a very challenging shot here with an elevated green and bunkers guarding the right side. Oh. And as you can tell, I did not like the outcome of this. <laughs> you can only laugh that ball somehow stayed on the upslope of this bunker. It doesn't look like it on camera, but that is a huge oh. upslope. And I'm kind of happy with his result because I could have easily sculled that into the lip of the bunker. Long putt for bogey. Oh. Came up just a tad short, but that would be conceded. Would end the ninth with a double bogey. Through nine holes, and I am at eight over 43, which I think all things considered isn't horrible. This is my fourth round in four days during my Pinehurst trip, and I can tell that my swing is just not there. Still fine in the fairways, but the ball striking with my irons, coupled with a poor short game, cost me some strokes. Let's see if I can figure it out on the back nine. The 10th hole dog legs to the right. If you have a fade, I would say hit it. That is exactly what I did there. I found the center of the fairway. Leaves me with about 135 yards in. And this time I am using the right club. That is a nine iron instead of a pitching wedge. Hit a nice, beautiful draw. Would hit the green and slightly roll off, but I would be putting on the fringe here for birdie, and you can see just how fast that putt was. <laughs> would blow that about five feet past the hole, but I would find the right side of the cup, and that is a nice little par. The 11th hole is another signature hole on this course, and you will see exactly what I mean in just a few seconds. I hit a huge banana slice and would find what feels like the Grand Canyon or Mars. Thankfully, the sand is compact. You kind of just have to hit it like you would out of a fairway, really. That's exactly what I did. Put it back into play. Leaves me with a gap wedge in. That was probably my best swing of the day in terms of my takeaway and alignment. I pulled that just a hair left and I have a very speedy putt apparently because I blew that way past the hole. 
would leave me with another five foot putt, kind of similar to the one that I had on the 10th, but this time I missed it on the left side. Tap in for bogey. I have to be honest with you, I should have parred that. 12th hole, dog legs to the left. I'm setting up for a fade here, but instead I come over the top with a closed club face and hook it into the trees. Although I would say that was an A plus for the club toss. I took a drop here. That is an eight iron trying to rope this around the tree line. And that is exactly what I did. I put myself back into a good position here, just pitching on. Nip that one pretty nicely. Nice kick to the left. It would roll out just a little bit more than I would have liked, but leaves me with about four feet for bogey. Could have been a par if I kept it in play, but I found the bottom of the cup. We now move to the 13th hole, and this is one of the reasons why I think there should be caddies on this course. The driver is the wrong play here. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? Was that? Did you hear that? I think I hit a tree. I hope not, because that means. So, yeah, this tee shot looks a lot shorter than it appears. Fortunately for me, I hit a tree and bounced back into play. My playing partner, unfortunately, as you can tell, he's searching for his ball. He could not find it. So driver is not the play there. That shot was a seven iron, just trying to get it back into play. What makes this approach shot so difficult on the 13th? And you probably can't tell by the aerial shot, but the green is severely elevated and completely hidden. You have no idea where to land this ball unless you drive up to the green and pick a spot out in the distance. Also, it's kind of hard getting the right yardages. I went with a marker that is just right on my ball. Flush that eight iron very, very well. Kind of pulled it just a hair left though. By the way, you were listening to Shame on the Moon by Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. One of my favorite bands of all time. That birdie putt was tracking, but broke just right of the hole. That would be a nice tap in for par. The 14th is a par three and the only time you will see water on this course. I was kind of flirting with it just a little bit. But I did take extra club and that ball landed just above pin high. You are now listening to Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. This is one of the straighter putts you will find on the course. I thought I had it, but would settle for a par. Man, that guitar solo is so good. I hope you guys stayed here for the music. Playing one of my favorite artists of all time, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. That's perfect. Is it? Yep. Perfect cut. <laughs> I didn't really know how severe this dog leg right was. I thought I put it in the bunker, but instead I drove this ball about 90 yards from the green. I'm using the downslope of the fairway to roll the ball up on the green, so that was pretty much like a 50 yard pitch shot. It worked out perfectly. Would have about five feet for birdie. Oh and I missed it on the low side. It, it broke a lot harder left than I did have a lot of good looks for birdie today. None of them fell, unfortunately. We'll move to the 16th hole. Another quirky hole. This one is a 90 degree dog leg left. You need like 180 ish yards to carry that waste area. And then once you are in the fairway, you have to contend with this behemoth of a green, a two tiered green. And today the pin position is in the back. That is a five iron. A skanky one at that. It will leave me in the center of the fairway. That is a pitching wedge. Plenty of club. Or so I thought. No. Oh. Take it up or down? Down. Damn. A little disappointed that I did not hit that top tier. This green has similar vibes to the 16th hole at Paso Tiempo. The odds of me of getting that one close are rather low. If you watch any of my videos at Pinehurst, two, four, or eight, you would understand. This, this bitch right here break big time. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. That would be a three putt bogey. Move to the 17th. There isn't much forgiveness to this course, but if you can find one, it's that these par threes are rather short. This one's playing at 125 yards. That is a pitching wedge. 
one of the better controlled iron shots that I had on this day. It's a lot easier when you're teeing it up. So I got that birdie putt and I just pushed it out to the right tap in for a par. Back nine playing a little bit better. 18th hole and looks may be deceiving, but that cliff doesn't really come into play as long as you get the ball in the air. I definitely got the ball in the air, but I pushed that one way, way right. Fortunately, there is enough room to the right you can bail out on. I found myself in a waste bunker and that was not a good strike. The wheels kind of fall off here on the 18th. You can see I'm a little disappointed. I thought that ball would roll onto the green, but I did not realize there was a bunker. Yeah, I believe my playing partners wrapped up this hole by this point as I went on a little voyage. This is not how you want to play the 18th hole. This is a putt for bogey. We come up just a tad short. So I would end the 18th on a double bogey. That last hole was a little brutal to watch. However, I did play the back nine a tad bit better than the front. I went five over 41 for a final score of 84. The ball striking with my irons was much better as I only missed two greens in total on the back nine, bumping my green and regulations up to 56% for the day. The driver kind of let me down because if there is one course you do not want to be spraying the ball around, it is this one. So here are my thoughts on Tobacco Road. It is tough. It's daunting. I think the blind shots and hard dog legs are really tough to navigate, which makes it even more surprising that they do not have any caddies on this course, or at least a four caddy. I think that's the only downside to Tobacco Road because the actual course is a blast. The visuals are awesome. The waste bunkers, I mean, you don't want to be in it, but it's cool as hell as to how they designed it. So if you're in Pinehurst on a golf trip, I think it is mandatory that you take the half hour drive to Tobacco Road. You will not regret it.